Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to tackle day 14 of Advent of Code. And day 14 have just released, so just let's just jump right into it. So here we have day 14, extended polymeth meth polymerization, okay? The incredible pressure at this depth are starting to put a strain on your submarine. The submarine has polymerization equipment uh, that would produce suitable materials to reproduce the uh, reinforced submarine and the nearby volcanically active caves should even have the necessary input elements in sufficient quantities. The submarine manual contains instructions for finding the optimal polymer formula. Specifically, it offers a polymer template and a list of pair insertion rules, your puzzle input. You just need to work out that polymer, uh, what polymer would result uh, after uh, repeating the pair insertion process a few times. For example, now we have a bunch of these. The first line of the polymer template, this is a starting point of the process. The following section defines the pair insertion rules. And rule it like A, B e, uh, goes to C. Uh, means that the elements A and B are immediately adjacent. Um, element C should be inserted between them. Okay. Means that Okay, if they are immediately adjacent, C should be inserted. So starting with the polymer template NNCB, the first step uh, simultaneously considers all three pairs. The first pair NN matches NNC, so element C is inserted between the first uh, N and the second N. The second pair NC matches the NCB, so B is inserted between N and C. Third pair CB matches the rule CBH, so the element H is inserted between C and B. Note that these pairs overlap, and the second element of the one pair is the first element of the sec next pair. Um, let's see. Mm. Okay. Uh, also, because all pairs are considered simultaneously, insert that elements are not considered to be a part of a pair until the next step. <coughs> mm -hmm. At the first uh, step of the process, the polymer becomes N, C, N, B. CHB. Yeah. Here is the result of the next step using the above rules. Hmm? Uh, the polymer grows quickly after five steps. It has the length of 97. After 10 steps, um, it has the length of 3073. After step 10, B occurs uh, 1749 times, C occurs 298 times, H occurs 191 times, and N occurs 865 times. Taking the quantity of the most common element, B, and subtracting the quantity of the least common element, H, produces uh, 1588. Apply 10 steps of pair insertions on the template and find the mo most and the least common elements in the result. What do you get if you take the quantity of the mo common element, most common element and subtract the quantity of the least common element? Ah, uh, and that's after 10 steps. I guess that this could explode in size if we let it in the future. So let's see here. Um, um, <laughs> we should be able to 
um, do this with some kind of a looping construct. Mm. So I have prepared here already and we will take this template that we have up here like this, put it into our data up here. Mm. And then we will have, I think, a hash map of string string. Template. New hash map. And then we will take this line and we have string work line and if the line is blank, we continue. If line uh, contains this kind of a thing and if it's not that then it's uh, the work line else we will take um, string template array equals to uh, line Split on these errors, and then we will take template, and we are back. Disk space issue again, so let's continue. So we have a template array that I created here, where I just split it out the line, and then I will take the first part of the template array and put that into this, and also the second part of the template array should also be in this hash map. Um, if we now print that out uh, and do a debugging here, we should have uh, the working line and also a fully filled template array if we run the right day. Uh, so this should be day 14 to start with. And um, see, there we go, index out of bounds for element one. Why do we have that? Um, let's do this. Um, what do we get here? Template array. Yeah, yes, 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 continue here as well, yeah, so let's do that and let's see, now we should not have that problem, yes, and we have a template with 16 different combinations and we have this BR here, mm. and if we look into the inputs here of day 14, so these are also pairs, which makes things easier. Um, so we are working with pairs. Um, so for int i, we'll have an integer work line length uh, like that i plus plus mm -mm -mm. then we will uh, why is it mm -hmm. might not be initialized yeah so let's initialize it to the empty string then you're happy. 
Now we need to do a work line substring of i to so it's the substring beginning and end index so i plus one perhaps um, term let's call it that um, and then we will see if template get term That string new string. Um, let's see here. Let's put that as the empty one. Mm, if work uh, is null. Then uh, new string will be will have the uh, work line substring i uh, i copied to it. So we only one one character there. Uh, else, if we have this term, we will do the same and also um, new string will have work added to it. Mm. So let's see what new string becomes down here. If we run this, the new string is nothing. I see here. That's a little bit strange. So let's go here. We have the term N. That's not great. So we want two plus one plus one. So here we have an N. We put that in. We have an C. Put that in. We have H. Yeah, and then we get out of bounds exception. So this should be work line minus one. Mm. And then we need to take um, Last character down here. Yeah, so, so that is not required. Um, so let's see what we get. So this was the string we got, and the string that they had here mm, as the first one is that. So it should be the same, and it is. Mm. So then we will do this J iteration here. J is less than 10. J plus plus. Mm -mm -mm. We say new string. Work line is equal to new string. And then we can do work line here down here. Mm. And then 
we need to do some calculation of the occurrences. But first we read this out. Now we have a long line of things. Mm. Let's We can do a lot of different things to calculate this. The first thing I can come up with is some kind of a string integer map. Uh, this is probably not the best way. You could probably do this with um, regression and so on. Um, want this character uh, find all that that and I'm going to take map if it uh, doesn't contain find then we will um, take this map and put find zero here else we will take map get find plus two plus plus <laughs> um, map put find into find plus one like that and let's see what we got here after this uh, run um, we will have a map of four characters and we will have a bunch of results uh, let's do a um, collections sort of map um, a, B, and A. Mm. Mm, can't really sort those. through each of these but we only want the want the values right so let's just do uh, uh, a list vals uh, map values And then we should be able to just take collections sort vowels. What do we get then? Mm. We have those sorted and we should be able to take uh, vowels, uh, get vowels size minus one, minus Vals get zero. What do we get then? You got 1588. So let's see if we can just run this one. 
um, and see what we get. We got 2321. Let's see if that is the correct value because this was after 10 steps, right? Yes, you get a gold star. I get a gold star. Everybody gets a gold star. So that's part one. The resulting polymer isn't nearly strong enough to reinforce the submarine. You need to run the, uh, more steps of the pair insertion process. A total of 40 steps should do it. In the above example, the most common element B is occurring that many times. The least common element H is occurring that many times. Subtracting these produces that. Apply the same for 40 insertions, what you get. Um, the most common, yeah, the least common. So we have the same, but a lot more of it. So this would be a long line. I wonder if string can handle it. I, I understand now that we need to change this up to big integers, of course. Um, and, and let's see here. Uh, subtract. The other one here that should be fine right and here we want to get that and add big integer one so that's pretty much it here we will do big integer zero so now we have at least solved that one uh, if we do 40 times here it will run for a while I guess and we are back and I knew this day would come and I need to just put one in the loose column for this one. I will not solve today's um, challenge. Maybe you have a solution that will work and I would love to hear about it in the comment section down below. Um, as you see here, I'm currently running. The last step took one hour and 10 minutes. That's step 27. The next step is gonna take at least two hours. And this is an exponential curve, which means that in about 400 days or so, it will be done. Uh, <laughs> and I will not wait 400 days, of course, for this. Um, so when we last left off, we did everything with strings and so on. And of course, I made things a lot more complicated, but it didn't work anyway. Um, so what I created here was something that could get all the combinations of letters in the first pair of letters. So if we have our input here, it's NV, then all the combinations would be N and V. So it will get all of those. Um, so nv to s which means that n will uh let's see here n and v is together and n is also together with b and so on so i created all those kind of combinations and then uh, further down here we read this in and create a byte pair a new class called byte pair uh, where i put in the uh, actual pair of bytes which we find and the result uh, of them when we get those out then i have this ridiculous little for loop structure here where i build up a multi-byte thing where all these seven bytes are in one multi-byte and that in turn gives a result which means that i can take seven bytes in a row and see if all these bytes is combined then I know this will be the result. Um, just to speed things up. If I take eight I ran out of memory so I will not do that. This will create a million at least or a 10 million or something like that of <laughs> these uh, multi-byte uh, constructs. And then I have this uh, little structure here where I create files as I did in day six I believe and then I run through here and this is the max so I will do 40 days uh, or 40 iterations I read in the first file and create an output file for the next and then go through each of them and I create a term here which is a multibyte, 
but I give it one byte first, and then I say, I, and that, that's the first byte in the series, and then I give it the rest of the sequence, so the next six of them, and then I skip six and give it the next six, and skip six, give it the next six, and then I can, from this term, get the result back every time. So I work with six or seven bytes every time in order to move things along a lot faster. And of course I will get some rest here. And if it hasn't done anything yet, so it was less than six, then I will just create a byte pair here with um, the first byte and then the next byte coming after, a new byte for each time and then get the term of that. Else I will go and take the next, the previous byte that I, from K here, and then go through these as well. And I realize that these are identical. So I could probably remove this one because K one minus one is still one. Um, so yeah, little bit of over-engineering there. And then I will close this file print out the step count and how long it took and also go through and calculate how many I have of each value so I can get that out on each iteration. But as I said, this takes a lot of time. So if you look at this byte pair, I pretty much have two bytes and then I can initiate these two bytes with a string so I get both bytes or I can set the second byte into uh, it can set in a new byte here and then I will move the last byte into the first byte and then set the, the byte last so I will uh, jump one byte every time um, and then I have equals and hash code functions uh, I have this to string uh, which gives me information I can return the first and second byte and this result function here will take the byte sequence that we put in here as the result and then uh, create an output here with the two sequence bytes and then we will put the uh, string byte as the first second uh, byte and then the second one we will put in here and that means that we will have the first byte and then the result will be the addition every time, the two extra bytes that we get. Uh, when we have this multi-byte, it's very similar. We can initiate it with uh, seven bytes if we want. Uh, or we can initiate it with just one byte and then we will put that as the last byte. If we give it new bytes, we will move that last byte to the first byte and then add all the other uh, bytes that comes after here. And the result is pretty much a way of getting all the results for a byte pair. So we go in here, create a byte pair, add the new byte, um, add the two first bytes and get the result for that. And then we will add the second byte. We will add a new byte, get the result of that, add that byte and so on. Um, and this result here is pre-calculated in this ridiculous for loop. <laughs> so we will get all those so we can have something that we can run uh, at the start here. But as you saw, this will take endlessly long to run. I've ran it with the smaller examples and I get the right result back. So I know that it works. It's just that it will not be <laughs> ending anytime soon. Um, I've also been thinking a little about, bit about, could I create some structure where I could replace any of the previous results with the current um, set that I have. So let's say that I have a day 20 uh, or step 27 and I look at step 25 and find tw step 25, the full sequence in uh, step 26, seven somewhere, then I could replace that with step uh, 26 perhaps. Uh, but that needs to be, uh, that's a very complicated thing and I don't know if I could implement that uh, in a good manner. Uh, so if you have any suggestions or if you so so solved it in a totally different way, then please leave a comment down below. I guess that you will be able to solve this pretty easily with some math structure uh, in some manner. 
but uh, just doing this the pragmatic way seems not to work for me. Uh, so this was today's video. I hope that you learned something today. I hope that you liked this video. Give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. Please leave a comment in the comment section down below if you have any suggestions or other comments. And I really hope to see you in the next video.